Good morning. And welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. At this time, I ask that you please silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering chant is Tree of Life, number 373 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries as we continue our journey to the beautiful holy season of Lent, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us our sin. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
Israel loved Joseph more than any of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits, and then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. And Judith said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. The response to our psalm, the Lord is our God, mindful of his covenant forever. holy name let 
the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. The Lord is our God, mindful of his covenant forever. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgment he uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The Lord is our God, mindful of his from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus entered the temple, and as he was teaching, the chief priests and the Pharisees came to him. Jesus said to them, listen to a parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his servants to the tenants, to collect his produce. But the ten seized the servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent another, other servants, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the ten saw the son, they said to themselves, The heir, come let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, who? What will he do to these tenants? The chief priests and the Pharisees said to Jesus, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give, them, give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? That was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Truly I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard the parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The experience of rejection can be found in both readings today. Joseph is rejected by his brothers who were jealous of Joseph because their father loved him more than any of his other sons. They intended to kill Joseph, but in the end they threw him into a well, a pit, and sold him to some foreigners who were heading to Egypt. Joseph, the rejected one, rose to a very prominent position in Egypt, as we know. He went on really to become the savior of his people, of his brothers. At a time of great famine in the land of Canaan, later the land of Israel, his brothers had to go to Egypt for food, and it was Joseph who was in charge of Egypt's food supply at the time. The story of Joseph is an expression of the image that Jesus uses in today's gospel reading. Drawn from one of the Psalms, it was the stone rejected by the builders 
that became the cornerstone. The parable that Jesus tells is also a story of rejection. The landowner sends his servants to collect the divine harvest from the tenants, and the servants are rejected and killed by the tenants. Of course, this refers to the prophets sent to the people of Israel in the past. Finally, the landowner sends his son, of course, this is Jesus, to collect the harvest, fully expecting that his son would be treated with respect. On the contrary, he is rejected in a most brutal way, thrown out of the vineyard and killed. Jesus saw himself in the person of the landowner's son. He was thrown out of the city of Jerusalem and crucified outside the city walls. Yet like Joseph, but even to a greater extent, this image of the rejected son who became the savior of those who rejected him would resonate certainly with the disciples and certainly with the scribes and Pharisees. The crucified Jesus, our savior, rose from the dead and became the cornerstone of a new community of believers, the church which was open to all, including those who rejected him. So both readings suggest that, they suggest that God is always at work to bring good out of the suffering people experience because of the hostility and evil of others. God works in a life-giving way in even the most unpromising uncom of situations. This gives us hope as we try to come to terms with our own painful and difficult experiences of faith that we face experiences of rejection, hostility we experience in our own lives. Our prayers of intercession today. For Holy Father Pope Francis and Peter our Bishop and all those who shepherd and guide our church, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, especially in Israel and Gaza, in Ukraine, other areas of conflict in our world, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the success of our upcoming parish mission. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the healing power of the Holy Spirit upon all our sick, especially Sandra Hickey and Yvonne Steiner. For these and all those who are sick in hospital at this time, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, for David Perry, whose funeral is today. We also pray for Joseph Finn, the Skirving family, deceased members of the Skirving family, Noreen Lewis. For these and all those who have died in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for your own intentions today at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts. We make them in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquity and cleanse us of our sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O Lord, 
for the worthy celebrations of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your <coughs> kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one vo voice of praise we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name, name, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer each other now the sign of the peace of Christ. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that, that you should enter into my room, but only say, say the word, word, my soul shall be Our communion hymn is Let Us Be Bread, 6.4 in Celebrate in Psalm, 6.4. Ooh. 
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course as so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks. Our missioning hymn, O Son of Justice, Fill Our Hearts, number 371 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Choose. 